This is a 2019 Ram 2500 Heavy Duty, and it is one of the toughest trucks around. Now, there are a few reasons why I say that, but the main one is the powertrain. This uses a 6.7 liter turbo diesel six cylinder with 360 horsepower and 850 pound feet of torque. And if that isn't enough for you, there's an optional upgrade that gives you 400 horsepower and a thousand pound feet of torque. Of course, all of that power doesn't come cheap. The sticker price on this Ram 2500 is just a shade over $82,000. Today, I'm going to review it. I've borrowed this Ram 2500 from Ram of Ontario, which is the local Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram dealer here in Ontario, California, east of Los Angeles. And it's one of the first new heavy duty Ram models to arrive. This truck has just been redesigned and the new versions are just starting to go on sale. So here's the deal with the new heavy duty Ram. Like previous models, it's available in two versions. There's a 2500 and the 35. And the one you want depends on how much you want to tow or haul. The base powertrain is actually a gas engine. It's a 410 horsepower V8 with 430 pound-feet of torque. But if you want to do serious work, you will want to upgrade to that Cummins turbo diesel six-cylinder. Like I mentioned, there are two versions, one with 850 pound-feet of torque and one with 1,000 pound-feet of torque, which, of course, are ridiculous numbers. But those ridiculous numbers lead to some great results. The most capable version of the Ram 3500 can pull 35,000 pounds, which is crazy, much more than all of the other big pickups. For context, a fully loaded semi-trailer weighs 45,000 pounds. So we're almost to the point where you can pull a fully loaded semi-trailer with a vehicle you could just go buy at your local Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram dealership. It's ridiculous. The payload capacity is also around 7,700 pounds, which is a pretty impressive figure as well. And the pricing is pretty impressive too. Now the sticker price for this truck is around $82,000, but I have seen fully loaded 3,500 models for $90,000 or more for a new pickup truck. So today I'm going to show you what you get for all that money. First, I'm gonna take you on a tour of the truck and I'm going to show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'm gonna get it out on the road and drive it and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the new heavy duty Ram, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the best preserved older pickup trucks currently listed for sale on Autotrader. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the new heavy-duty Ram with simply getting inside. You walk up to the truck and open the door, and you will notice that a power running board extends from under the door where it's been hidden to provide you with a little step to get up into the truck. Now, I don't always love this feature for various reasons. It adds complications. Sometimes it actually makes it harder to get into the truck. But in this case, I think it's basically essential. This truck is so tall, so high up off the ground. Even for me, I'm pretty tall that you basically need that step in order to get inside. Anyway, when you get inside the truck and close the door, the power running board retracts right back up into the truck so it doesn't get stuck on anything if you're going off-roading or down a rough road. But anyway, once you climb into the new heavy-duty Ram, you will notice a myriad of quirks and a lot of features. I'm gonna start with the center console, which is probably the best in the entire car industry. Now you open up the center console and you'll find that written on the underside of the lid, for the center console, there are a lot of different things. Not just things, but, well, you have trigonometric ratios in the upper right. You have the Pythagorean theorem. You have a little tool that will help you measure angles. There's a centimeter ruler. You have a fraction to decimal chart, and you also have a standard metric wrench conversion chart always stuck here. I guess they figure if you're using your heavy-duty RAM out on the job site and you're like, what's that fraction to decimal? I don't remember. You can always just pop open your center console lid 
and there it is. It's kind of a nifty little quirk that I've only seen on Rams. But obviously that stuff isn't the reason why this is the best center console in the car industry. There is far more to it than that. I want to start with this little top piece in the center console here. In the front you can see it has cup holders and in the back you can pop it open and there's coin storage in there. That's kind of interesting but the most interesting part is this piece moves. You press this little button at the front of this piece and you can move it backwards or forwards in the center console. And the best the benefit there is that you have this giant center console in the middle and you can have all your stuff in the front and you can put the top piece back or you can have all your stuff in the back and you can have the top piece further forward depending on where you want your storage and your cup holders. It's just tremendously configurable. But you might be thinking, well, what if you have stuff in the bottom part? You don't want it to get like lost underneath this movable top piece. Well. Ram has thought of that, there's a fence. There's a little plastic divider that you can flip up into place, and then if you have your cargo in the rear part of the center console, it won't accidentally get stuck underneath this movable area, so you will always have access to it. That's brilliant. And by the way, speaking of that fence, if you look very closely at it, you will see it has images of previous Ram pickup trucks emblazoned on it, I guess as a reminder, of what is in the past. Most people probably won't notice that, but I find it to be an excellent little Easter egg for Ram owners. Another interesting and really smart item in this center console, there is a max fill line. This is the highest you want to fill it to because otherwise when you move this movable part forward or backwards, it'll run into your stuff. So the max fill line lets you know the maximum amount you can fill the center console with stuff before it would get in the way of this top piece moving backwards or forwards. That is a good idea. And one other thing I like about the center console, the very furthest forward part has wireless cell phone chargers. You can stick your phone in there and it will charge as you drive without plugging it in. That's kind of normal in cars. The cool thing though is they call it Ram Charger, which is a great idea after the old Ram Charger SUVs. Apparently Chrysler doesn't want to bring that back, but they've carried on the name in the form of a cell phone charger in a Ram. Now next up we move on to the center controls and you can see this truck has an absolutely massive screen and it has a couple of cool features, one of which is the backup camera situation. You go into the backup cameras and you can look at your normal backup camera that tells you if you're about to hit something or you can access a second camera angle that allows you to look into the bed while you're backing up. Ram calls this the cargo cam. It just provides a different angle for backing up and it has a center line right on the screen which could be used if you're trying to back up and sync up your RAM with a trailer that you're about to tow. But the cool camera stuff with this truck doesn't stop there. You also have side cameras that will show the left and right sides of the truck, which can be useful if you're in a tight space. Now, the cool thing here is that you can actually zoom in. If you want to focus more on the right side because you're tight up against a wall on that side, you can zoom over to the right, or you can do the same thing on the left side. A lot of cars have that side-to-side -side camera function, but most don't allow you to zoom like this. Now, one other impressive feature with the camera system, this truck has a 360-degree top-down camera, basically looking at the truck from above. A lot of new cars have this, but I wish I saw it more. It has the effect of making making this truck feel smaller, if that is somehow possible, since you always know where all the edges and corners are when you're backing up. A couple of other interesting functions of the screen. One, you can raise or lower the running boards with the push of a button on the screen. Press the button and the running boards will go up or down at your whim. I'm not exactly sure why you would want to put them down if the doors aren't open, but you can if you want. Here's an even more impressive function. You can raise or lower the bed. Press this little control in the center screen and the bed will actually go down to allow for easier loading of stuff. That is a neat trick. This truck has air suspension, so the ride height can be adjustable, but the most impressive part is that the bed can adjust up or down independently of the front to make it easier to put stuff in. And since we're talking about the screen, I should give my opinion of it. I find it to be absolutely fantastic. This is one of the largest screens in the entire car industry. It basically rivals Tesla's large screen, and it's really, really good. Tremendously responsive to your touch. It has a lot of great functions, and you can see just how large, for instance, the navigation map is on this screen. You'll never have vision problems looking at this. You'll never be squinting because the screen is too small. I also like the fact that Ram has made sure that the climate control 
controls still have physical buttons on the sides of the screen. And that way, if you want to just increase or decrease the air temperature by a few degrees, you don't have to go into some menu. You can just tap a little button like normal. Simple shortcuts like that should always have physical buttons. I wish they did that in this truck for the heated seats, the cooled seats, but instead you do have to go through the screen to do that. It's a fairly simple process. Just tap the controls icon and then tap whatever you want. But it would be easier if a simple control like that was able to be turned on or off with the press of a real physical button. With that said, I suspect the reason they didn't give physical buttons to the heated seats, the cooled seats, the heated steering wheel is because there's nowhere to put them. The giant screen is right in the middle of everything, and then there are a lot of other buttons in this truck. One of my favorites is right in the middle. It looks like a tilted ice cream cone. That button is the exhaust braking feature, and if you push it, it will close a little butterfly valve in the exhaust that will restrict exhaust flow and therefore slow you down. The theory is if you're towing a heavy trailer and you're going down a mountain, you don't want to be riding the brakes because they could get too hot. So instead you can turn that on and it will help slow you down independent of the brakes, which will help ensure that you don't ride the brakes too much and they fade from heat. Other interesting buttons in this truck, this time on the ceiling next to the rear view mirror, one button up there will lower the tailgate. You press that button and then the tailgate will automatically drop down, which is pretty cool. Now next up there are some more interesting and unusual details worth pointing out in this interior, starting with the sun visors. They're fairly standard sun visors except on the little part where they latch, you can see there's a clip here for paper clips. There's even a little picture of a paper clip to let you know that's how you're supposed to use it. And check it out, if you open the sun visor, there is a second clip on the other side for even more paper clips. That is a brilliant idea. Of course, the passenger side visor has it as well, so you can store a lot of paper clips in your ramp. And speaking of nifty little placement storage items, you obviously have two cup holders in the middle, but there are also cup holders in the door pockets. And if you look closely, you will see there's also a little pen holder in there, which is a really cool idea. It gives you a spot to put your pens in case you're always looking for one. They get lost in your interior. Now you have a place. Other nifty little storage items in this truck. You have a storage pocket in the door panel, like most vehicles, but you also have a second storage pocket a little further up if you want to put more stuff in your door panel. You also have dual storage pockets when it comes to the glove box. You have the typical lower glove box like most vehicles, but then you press this little button on the dashboard and it opens up a second upper glove box where again, you can store more stuff. And another thoughtful storage touch in this truck, most vehicles have their tire jack located in their trunk, but obviously this truck has a truck bed. And if you're hauling something and get a flat tire, you don't wanna to have to unload the bed in order to access the jack. So look on the bottom of the passenger seat, you can see a little jack icon. You peel that piece of plastic away and that's where your tire changing stuff is, your jack, that, is a good idea and a good placement. And one more rather interesting feature in the front is the mirror control. Now you look at the side mirrors and you can see there are actually two mirrors on them. There's the normal one for normal driving and then there's an outer mirror. That's for like trailer towing. It gives you a larger field of vision. Now the cool thing with this truck is you can power adjust either of those mirrors. You can adjust the normal mirror by just pressing the little L on the driver's door panel and then moving around the mirror adjustment joystick. Pretty standard. But there is also a button that will direct your mirror adjustment to the outer mirror. If you push that and then push L or R, then you can use the joystick and now you're moving the outer mirror. If you unhighlight the outer mirror, again, you go back to just moving the default regular mirror. It's a pretty good idea and that means you don't have to get out and adjust the placement of the outer mirror. You can do both from the comfort of your Ram. And next up, moving on to the back seat of the new Ram, there are quite a few interesting quirks and good ideas back here, starting with the floor storage. You open the door, you see this little plastic panel. If you pull the latch, you can see that there's a little storage compartment in the floor. If you wanna keep stuff completely hidden from anyone, you can stick it in there. Another really good idea in the back seat of this truck, if you lift up the seat bottom, you can see that there's some sort of contraption under there. Well, what that is, is a little foldable panel. And if you fold out the legs, you can completely fold this panel out. It has cloth on top of it. And then you have a flat floor in the back. And that way, if you're transporting something and you don't want to throw it in the bed where it could bump around and get rained on, you can make this flat floor in the back seat and stick your item back here and it's safer than it would be in the bed. That is a really cool idea. Now, interestingly, when you fold this rear floor flat, there is still a cutout 
for the rear cup holder. So you have this flat load floor and you load in your precious cargo that can't possibly go in the bed. And then you can also have a drink back here if you want, I guess. By the way, all of this rear seat storage and under seat flat floor stuff is a really good idea. But maybe the best piece of attention to detail is the fact that when you fold up the rear seat bottom, there's a light there that in most situations you'll never see. But when you have the seat bottom folded up, the light will illuminate your cargo under the floor or your flat load floor, and that will let you see what you're loading a little bit better. That is a really, really smart idea. Another cool thing in the back of this truck is the rear of the front center console, which is just fantastic. You have two USB ports back here for charging. You have two USB-C ports back here for charging, and you also have a traditional household style power outlet back here. This is for people who really want to use this thing for work purposes, and you know, they have to charge up a lot of stuff. Now, next up, we move on to the outside of the Ram 2500. <laughs> I want to start with the front because it is absolutely insane. First off, this giant front grille. You make no mistake what type of vehicle this is. It is absolutely huge. It says Ram, absolutely huge. Everything about the front of this truck is just ridiculously massive, including just the entire front end. It's incredibly tall, as you probably saw in my opening shots. I barely fit over this. In fact, when I'm standing behind this truck, it comes up to like my neck. I'm six foot four. I think this truck, the front end, is about five feet tall, which you just won't see in basically any other vehicle. Europeans watching this probably think we're all crazy. We don't all drive trucks like this. This is about the biggest I've seen. Now, the reason the front end of this truck is so massive, obviously, is to fit the massive engine. Like I mentioned, this truck has a 6.7 liter turbo diesel engine. Oddly, not a V8. This truck instead has a straight six, for whatever reason, Cummins felt that was the best for towing and hauling and sticking massive amounts of torque through here. Now, next up, moving down the side of the truck, I wanna go back for a second to the mirrors because there is just so much to talk about. First off, these mirrors are absolutely massive. Just look how huge they are, but there's more to them than that. Like I mentioned, each mirror really contains two mirrors. There's also a blind spot monitor warning. There's a heater in the mirrors. There is a turn signal. There is a little light underneath the mirror, and there is a camera in both mirrors, and then they stick out like 16 inches from the doors. Needless to say, these mirrors are so massive and so complicated, you don't want them to break off your truck. I suspect that'll be like $1,500 to replace, or maybe more. Now, another interesting thing on the side of the truck, this is the window sticker. And I've always loved the fact that in the fuel economy section of the window sticker for huge trucks like this, there's nothing. You see, when the government mandated that fuel economy had to be printed on window stickers, they were never thinking vehicles would get this big. They were only thinking that you needed to put it on the window sticker for passenger cars, because back then, 20, 30, 40 years ago, they never thought regular people would want to buy something this big. So for fuel economy purposes, this is considered a commercial vehicle, and it doesn't have to report its fuel economy on the window sticker like everything else. Even though this is the vehicle you probably want most to report its fuel economy, you want to know if you're really going to be getting nine miles per gallon. But they don't have to tell you because of outdated government regulation. Now, next up, I want to move on to the back of the new Ram, and I want to start by talking about the taillight assembly. You see these two white pieces back here, one on the bottom, one on the top? Well, those are the turn signals. You turn on the turn signal and they light up in orange. That's not all that unusual. The unusual part is they're also the brake lights. So if you have the turn signal on and you press the brakes, the brake lights won't light up on that side because the turn signals and brake lights share this area. This truck, with as massive and gargantuan as it is, <laughs> the taillight assembly doesn't have enough room to separate the brake lights and the turn signals. Now, the weird thing about that is, right in the middle, there's this giant plastic area that says RAM <laughs> that you think they probably could have used for either the turn signal or the brake lights, one or the other, but they didn't. I suspect that's because this is the blind spot monitoring system, so they had to keep this free of lighting, and that's why it's plastic and it says RAM on it, and that's why the turn signals and the brake lights are almost afterthoughts in the taillight assembly. Next up, moving on to the bed of the new RAM and to the tailgate. Now, if I want to open the tailgate, I could stick my hand under here and open it, but why go to all that trouble when you could just tap the key and then it falls right down 
without me having to do anything. Now, once you're in the bed, you can see a couple of interesting items. One is that there are actual mounting points inside the bed for a fifth wheel or a camper trailer. They know you buy one of these, you're gonna be pulling stuff, and so they stick those points in there from the factory. One other interesting item in the bed is that this truck has LED lights mounted in the bed. So if you're rooting around back here in your cargo trying to get something out and it's late at night, you can turn on those LED lights and see what you're doing. In fact, there's a little rubber button you can push to turn the lights on or off. Now, the interesting thing about the lights is that they actually say RAM on them. <laughs> I'm not really sure why they went to the trouble of putting RAM on these lights. It's not like anybody would be confused or even care that the lights say RAM, but you know, that added eight cents to the purchase price of this truck. And so those are the quirks and features of the new Ram 2500. Now it's time to get it out on the road and drive it. All right, driving the new heavy duty Ram. This truck is absolutely massive. Even as pickup trucks go, this is a huge one. It's just so far out in front of you, so massively high. It's the driving position of this thing is just crazy. And of course, every aspect of it is larger than it should be. The mirrors are huge, and you know, you're sitting so high, and and, and the, the center console you can put five laptops in. I mean, everything is just outsized. So this is the limited model, which is like a really high-end version that's intended to be the top of the range. And it really does do a good job of being the top of the range. Very luxurious, leather everywhere, heated steering wheel, cooled seats, like I mentioned, heated rear seats. This truck really combines it all. You have the ability to tow, to haul, uh, and yet you can sit in here just bathed in luxury. But then when you pay $82,000, you better have it all. Accelerations. Strong. Surpri <laughs> surprisingly strong. Going way too fast there. Uh, yeah, this thing actually moves pretty well. I mean, it's only 370 horsepower, but it has 850 pound feet of torque. Going around corners obviously is just a laughable exercise in absurdity. The truck has body roll. Uh, the steering is very light and vague, but that's the intent. This is a full size truck, not a sports car, and people who drive these things are totally used to that. You really do feel like you're tremendously capable. I, if I wanted to haul five of the cars that I'm passing on the side of the road, I could do that. Just stick them up, I can pull them. Let's do it. It's, it's really just everything. You finally have the tech that's in the regular Ram 1500, which I already reviewed and was impressive. But now you also add immensely more capability, you know, higher seating position, better feel. It's just the ultimate in luxury vehicle plus the ultimate in towing hauling capability. It's amazing uh, what this can do. What it can't do is, it certainly isn't a sports car, it's relatively quick, but it doesn't handle it all really well. And the interior, while it's loaded with equipment and features and such, it certainly isn't as nice as like a real luxury car, Lexus, even Acura, obviously Mercedes, BMW, Audi, it's not on that level. Um, but it's very nice and it's full of stuff and tech and features. And so that's the new 2019 Ram 2500 Heavy Duty. This is quite a truck. It is absolutely huge. It is tremendously capable for towing and hauling. It's full of a lot of luxury and technology and it is quite expensive. This is basically the most ridiculous, absurd, massive, insane, and impressive pickup truck on the market, and that is saying something. And now it's time to give this truck a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Ram 2500 HD is pretty much normal for a pickup and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration is a bit slower than its Ford Super Duty rival and it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is normal for the class and it gets a 2 out of 10. Fun factor is pretty low. This is a pickup and fun isn't really what they're going for and it gets a 1 out of 10. Cool factor is only okay and only then because it's the big crazy Ram with all the torque and capability, it gets a 3 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 12 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Ram Ram 2500 is loaded with a lot of great tech, not quite the cutting edge stuff of brand new luxury cars, but really good, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Comfort, this is everything you'd expect from a heavy duty pickup, and it gets a 7 out of 10. Quality is good, materials are nice, but Chrysler reliability is a bit of a concern, and it gets a 6 out of 10. Practicality is normal for the class, and it gets an 8 out of 10. Finally, value, and this has it all. Good capability, lots of tech, and room for the family, but $82,000 is big money for a Ram, for these materials, for something that isn't a 
a Mercedes or a Porsche and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 34 out of 50. Added up in the Doug score is 46 out of 100, which ties it with the new Ford F250 Platinum. The Ram has more stuff, the F250 has a better reliability track record, but ultimately these are pretty similar vehicles and both trucks can do basically anything you ask of them.